So in the um, anniversary edition, you include an introduction where you talk about your life and how you came to write the book. Tell us a little bit more about what that time was like. Well, you know, the book is 25 years old, and it was a little difficult to remember that time without using a device to get there. So I used a photo of myself in my mid-20s and uh, studied that photo of this woman I used to be and uh, wrote from there. And what came from it was a rather long essay about who I used to be and where I was when I was actually writing the book. And you studied at the uh, prestigious uh, Iowa Writers' Workshop. What was it like uh, being there as a Chicana woman who grew up in Chicago? Well, it wasn't so prestigious to me. It was rather horrible. And uh, I like to tell people that I'm a writer despite the University of Iowa Writers' Workshop. It taught me what I didn't want to be as a writer and how I didn't want to teach. Uh, I think that we often don't hear from the dissident voices of people who were enrolled there, people of color, uh, women working class people, because there are so few of them there. And uh, when they do uh, survive that experience, perhaps they're uh, not in a place where they can voice their uh, opinion. So it sounds like you absolutely hated it, but I mean, was well, it that's in a putting sense? it mildly? <laughs> yes. Had anybody ever written a book uh, like *The House on Mango Street* before you wrote it? I mean, was, was this kind of literature around? Was it readily available? Was it? I was there a milieu that was sort of writing about this sort I of stuff? I think that uh, perhaps a literary critic could argue that there were models for a book like this. I wasn't aware of them at the time, but certainly they came to me later and, and are my favorite books. Maud Martha by Gwendolyn Brooks. It's a series of vignettes written by a poet. And uh, Lilus Kikus, written by the Mexican writer Elena Poniatowska. Uh, there's a book called Canic by Ermilo Abreu. Gomez, a, um, a writer from the Yucatan in Mexico. And so there are different uh, uh, models, uh, four-story cycles that I've discovered, They're usually written by women or people of color. They're an alternate way of storytelling. And there are novels, but not in the way, the linear way that we're used to. Mm. No. And, and are they portraits, really, of people that you were growing up with at that time? They're portraits of people from my past and the at the time I was working the book. So they are people remembered and people observed, uh, sometimes meshed together. My students, as well as memories of young women, and my own memories uh, intermixed with uh, the lives of the girls I was working with. I, I think of her as being in the border zone between childhood and adulthood, and uh, I used her at first to voice my own uh, um, censored period at Iowa to gain a voice in which I could say things I could not say as a young woman in my 20s. And uh, eventually she became a voice for um, many of my concerns about my young students, not simply my remembrances. So in the beginning she was uh, me, and uh, later as the book traveled uh, from Iowa to Chicago, uh, she became a spokesperson for things I wanted to say, injustices that I witnessed as a teacher working with young Latinas in the Pilsen community of Chicago. And how did writing uh, the book help you answer some of the questions that you had um, growing up, some of the concerns that you wanted to express? Well, you have to think of yourself as a young woman in the 20s, uh, you are breaking all of the traditions uh, that are part of your culture. You're living away from home. You've gone away to school. You don't want to get married. You don't want to have children. Your brothers are still living at home. You're working for minimum wage, sometimes part-time. And you're working in a community with other young women that are going to lead the lives that you don't want to lead. And you have lots of questions. Uh, you're teaching them uh, how to write poetry. Perhaps you're teaching them how to read uh, literature. And perhaps you're teaching reading skills. And every day you go to work and you think, what the hell am I doing? Shouldn't I be teaching these girls uh, how to control their fertility? Uh, how can I help these guys that are getting beat up every day when they walk to class because they live in a gang-infested neighborhood? How can I keep them safe? Uh, what am I doing with my own life? And what is my own political direction? Do I really want to write? Is that the most important thing in my life? And how is writing going to change the world? Uh, these were questions that I wasn't taught at Iowa, and they were of great concern to me in my 20s. Uh, I thought perhaps I might give up writing. Maybe I would take something 
and some other skill that I could uh, use it with my young women, something that might change their lives, something that would save them, that would give them a better life other than teaching them how to write poetry. How is a poem going to save them? What's the use of literature? Why do we teach literature to people who have such sad and desperate lives? And why am I a writer? You know, these were all questions I thought about. And meanwhile, you know, my father's calling me and saying, when are you going to come home, mija? You know, what are you doing living all alone in that cold apartment? Come home. And you have doubts, too. Should I go home? What am I doing with my life? You know, when you're a young woman in your 20s, all you're taught is to satisfy other people your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, your community, your church, your uh, city, all of the things that a good woman is defined as might be contrary to what makes you happy. And I was filled with this angst of not knowing what I wanted because, well, frankly, no one had ever asked. 